Hello everyone and welcome to the second Nerdcraft Blender tutorial. The principled shader. Do you love it or hate it? Honestly, I avoided using this note for a long time because, well, just look at it. However, the principal shader is more realistic and technically accurate than any other node group you might create without it. For example, it accounts for Fresnel in connection with IOR realistically. If you haven't heard someone like Andrew Price explain exactly what that means, that's okay. I'll explain it in another video. However, the principal shader does have some problems. Aside from the obvious, some of the settings are unnecessary and technically unrealistic. And even if you're not aiming for realism, it's unlikely that you will even use most of these settings together. It's more than likely that you will only use certain sets of these settings together at any given time. So, why don't we cut the principal shader into smaller nodes that we actually need and which are more practical? And along the way, I'll show you how to make these nodes just a bit more useful and accurate as a bonus. In this video, let's start with something simple, the metal shader. A quick thank you to Nerdcraft's first patrons, Joshua Stafford and Saki Frankel. If you want to get your own shout out and your name in the credits of my videos thereafter, you may support this channel on Patreon and get other perks like early access to and the files or assets from these tutorials, as well as other behind the scenes updates for upcoming content that I have in store besides tutorials like this. So in our default blender scene, uh, I'm going to set things up a little bit. I'm going to add uh, a ground plane and I'm also going to add Suzanne the monkey head. I'm going to control, th control 3 to add a little subdivision surface modifier. Right click and shade smooth. And then I'm going to rotate her uh, like this and set her on top of the ground here so it looks a little bit nice. Now if we go into rendered view now holding Z down, uh, I already have a sun and sky texture set up which you can do by going to the world settings and changing the color to a sky texture or you can add any light or lamp that you want to the scene. I'm just going to rotate her 90 degrees and after pressing shift alt Z to get rid of all of our viewport stuff out of the way, uh, we can start with the actual meat of our tutorial. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this since I'm not working on geometry nodes today. Make sure that you have the uh, node wrangler add-on turned on. If you don't know how to do that, there's going to be a screenshot right now that you can pause and, and do that because it gives us more screen uh, keyboard shortcuts uh, for, for, for nodes. So instead of adding a new material, I'm just going to use the one that was on the default cube. We, we might as well not let that poor thing go uh, completely to waste. Uh, now one thing not to do, we could select the principal shader and press Control G, uh, but that would give us all of these uh, inputs already there, and I would rather not delete them all. I would rather just add the few that I need one at a time. So I'm going to, I'm going to undo that. And instead what you can do is you can just add any node that you want to. I'm just going to Shift A, S to search for RGB node. It really doesn't matter what one you add. Select both of them and then press Control G to make a group. That way we can start from scratch with our inputs. Uh, so after deleting the RGB that we don't need anymore, our first input is going to be our color. Uh, we still need that. I'm going to make, if I press Control Space to maximize this, I'm going to make one change right away. If I press in and go over to our group, I'm going to rename this base color and I'm, I'm just going to call it color. It suits me. Um, and now the, the second thing really highlights one of the first major problems with the principal shader. Uh, you'll notice this um, metallic, this uh, metallic factor. And in real life, there is actually no such thing as a mix between a metal and another material. All materials are either metal or they're not metal. There's no way to mix those two. So really there shouldn't be this setting here. So we're just going to set it to one and that's just going to take care of our metal. <clears throat> now, the next thing I'm about to do might be somewhat surprising, but we need it to make it just a little bit more accurate. I'm going to actually plug our next input into this way down here that says IOR. Now you'll probably know that's index of refraction, which is usually associated with clear materials. Why are we adding this to metal? Well, the, the truth is, is index of refraction not only affects the way light is bent in a clear material, like a, like a magnifying glass, it also affects the way light is reflected off of materials. Um, 
But the principal shader treats that a little bit differently. Instead, it controls that with this factor here that says specular. Let me show you an example. Uh, after plugging in one more thing, I'm going to plug in our roughness because we will also uh, need that. If we tab outside of that, and let's make this something that looks more like a, I don't know, something like steel or something. Let's turn the roughness up here. Uh, let's make it very dark. Mm, something like that, it really doesn't matter. As long as, it's, as long as it's dark enough. Now, let's note what happens to Suzanne here when we tab inside of our group and if we mess with the specular factor. If we turn all the way to zero, we notice that her reflections are completely the brown color that we chose. But if we turn this to specular, we might also call this the reflectivity up, then the her, her reflective surface starts to get less brown around the edges, more of a white, uh, normal colored reflection. But this should actually be controlled by the index of refraction. So plug that instead into the specular. Now the problem is, uh, you, you can look up the accurate IOR uh, values for different materials on a website. In fact, I will have a link for that down in the description, a web page where you can look these up. Uh, but if you were to paste those into this right now, it would not match because the IOR and this spe specular are different. So the way it should work is just like at zero, it was all the color of the metal, but at one, it was a little bit of a white around the edges. Um, here, this should actually happen at an index of refraction of one. That should be completely brown. And the, the higher it goes, then those, those bright, uh, those lighter reflections should come in. So we have to actually convert these if we want them to be accurate. So I, I looked up and I found out the, the accurate equation to do this. And uh, once we set this up, we will never have to do it again. So let's get it over with. Uh, we're going to add a math node. So you would shift A and search for a math node or go to converter here. But instead what I did is I right clicked on it like you can do with any of these shaders and create a, a custom keyboard shortcut for it. So for me, that is control M. Uh, so I'm gonna put this over our IOR and I'm actually gonna change this to subtract and we're going to subtract one. We're gonna copy this and plug the same thing into the first socket, but we're going to add one, same thing, but add one. Now we're gonna add another math node and I'm gonna make a little more room here. Uh, we're going to set this to divide and plug the top one into the top one and the second one into the second one. And another math node, only a few more to go, only two more I think to go. We're gonna change this to power and we're going to plug that in there and make sure that we're plugging this back into our specular because that's, that's where it needs to go. And we're gonna give it a power of two and now one final node uh, at this level. Uh, we're gonna copy our divide node. And now we are going to set this to 0 0.08. That is the equation to convert index of refraction into this specularity shader that the principled shader uses, or the, the specularity factor, I should say. Um, so now I'm going to select all of them and press Control G. And if I tab out of this, I'm gonna call this IOR to specularity. And hopefully I am spelling that correctly. Uh, tab inside and if you want to, you can change, press in and scroll down to group here and change the name of the first one to IOR and change the name of the output to specularity. S-P-E-C-U-L-A-R. I'm dyslexic so I have to second guess myself. <laughs> so that is it. However, I did notice one problem that this equation does not solve. Uh, let me show you what we are going to do. So this converts IOR uh, to specularity. So now if we paste those values in from the internet to, to you know, gold or whatever material uh, you're creating, that will be accurate. However, that equation only works for indexes of refraction that are above one. If they go below one, like gold does for, for some reason, um, the reason this is, is an index of refraction of one lets light go straight through, just like through air. Uh, above one bends light like a magnifying glass, but anything below one bends light in the 
other direction, and therefore the light gets reflected a bit differently as well. Gold has an IOR of point zero point four seven, so this will be important. It will be minor, few people will notice it. And unfortunately, I haven't found the 100% correct equation for this, but this is the best that I could figure, and it does get us pretty close, and it's, it's quite simple. Uh, we're going to shift A and search for a Fresnel node, F-R-E-S-N-E-L, that's a French word where the S is silent. We're going to plug that into there, but now we want it to be this equation for anything below one, so this is how we do that. Shift A and search for a Nix node and put that over here. And if we add a math node over here and plug IOR, we want to tell this that if it is less than one, if it is less than one, then the factor will change to the second output, which will be this. And that is all for that. And here are two important things. One thing is save the blend file. Uh, so I'm going to control S and I'm gonna to navigate to my assets folder, which I'm already in. And I'm going to call this principled because we will, I think we'll use the same blend file in, in the next t tutorials in this series. Uh, so I, I'm just, I'm just going to call it that. And now the second thing, tab out of this group and we're going to call this principled metal. M-E-T-A-L because there's metal and metal and metal. Anyway, if, if I spelled it incorrectly, I'll fix it later. Um, so now we're ready to start adding some more. From here, it's actually easy. Uh, we just need to basically add the other inputs uh, that we need. So now uh, for metal, uh, we will also need uh, anisotropic, this one here. That will allow us to make uh, things that look like brushed metal. So instead of just one little speck of, of reflected light, it turns into like a line, kind of like on a CD or a DVD or, or brushed metal, like pots and pans. And I'm going to press in, and uh, we're going to plug in our anisotropic rotation so that we can change the angle of that uh, of that reflected line. And I'm actually going to change its name. I'm going to change it to just rotation, nice and simple, easy to look at, because we're, we're trying to make this look easier than the principal shader. And uh, from now, uh, I, I will show an extra thing that you can do, uh, but you do not have to. But for now, the only other things that we actually need are the normal, so that we can add bump and tangent here so that we can give custom directions across the object for the for the little uh, anisotropic brushed metal lines. So if you wanted to stop here, you certainly could, and you can skip forward to the next tutorial in the series, um, which there will be a link to the playlist in the description. However, if you want to add an extra thing, uh, we can make the metal glow. For instance, if you're forging a sword, or uh, you, you, you know you have the metal in a kiln and it's heating up and, and turning red hot, uh, we can also add that. So if you want to, let's tap back into this. And this is fairly simple, but we are going to make another slight fix here. That slight fix will be um, if we if we first plug into our emission strength uh, so that we can start to make it glow. First of all, I want that to be zero by default. So in and click on emission strength. Let's move that above our normal and let's give it a default of zero. But now the problem is if, if we have our, our mission here and let's look at Suzanne to see an example of what will happen. Uh, if we just use this color uh, factor here, then we can make it glow any color that we want to. We can have purple glowing metal or we can have green glowing metal, which that's not the way it works in real life. So whenever things get warmer, uh, it starts to glow red hot, and then it goes to orange and yellow, and then white and blue at the hottest. That's actually how stars glow in metal and wood when they burn are the same way. But there's a simple conversion for this. Blender already has a node. So we're going to shift A as to search for black body. One word, black body. And we're going to put an input into there and it will be called temperature by default, and that's exactly what we want. So let's in, and let's move this temperature up above normal, and I do want it to be below that emission strength. And actually, I'm going to change the name of the emission strength, because I think glow is a little bit more intuitive for me, especially since we're kind of changing things up the way the principal shader usually works. So now that converts it 
based on a temperature and what color it should be. So now we can plug that color into our color. However, there's a couple of problems that we're gonna fix. One thing is this, uh, this temperature uh, factor that we have. Uh, we have to scroll a lot. We start out at you know red hot and then it gets hotter to yellow and all the right colors, but these are in thousands of degrees and it's really hard to scroll through all of these and, uh, and get what we want. So I'm going to actually break this up into thousands of degrees so that it's easier to get the color temperature that we want. So I'm just going to add one more math node and if I can place it over this temperature uh, noodle here and I'm going to multiply it by 1000. And I might just click on our temperature here and rename it to temperature K. That way we know it's in thousands, uh, just because I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> so now that we've divided this by a thousand, let's change the defaults in order to match that. Uh, so the default temperature uh, was 1500. So now in thousands in K, that's 1.5 K. The minimum is 800, which would be 0.8, and the maximum would be at 12,000 is now 12. So now if we tab out of this, and if, if we just bring this down to like one to start with, and um, if we have our glow turned up, as we cycle through these, the temperature, it's a lot easier, it's a lot easy to scroll through this since we're just skipping over thousands instead of individual degrees. And now, there's only one more fix that is actually a problem uh, with the principal shader with the emission. So we, we notice uh, with our uh, uh, emission strength, which is called glow out here, uh, it doesn't it doesn't go below zero, which is, which is good because at zero it's not glowing. However, if we were to plug another factor into this and say that it might go below zero by accident, um, let's just add a value node to show what I'm talking about. If we plug this value into glow, this can go below zero. So above one, of course it starts to glow, but below zero, it starts to turn these weird colors. So this is a problem that we can fix very easily. So let's just add a math node, put this over the glow or emission strength here. And, uh, and if, you can't, if you can't get it in all this mess of noodles, just hold the alt key down and put it over here and plug plug glow in and then plug emission in, just you know, make it easier if you need to. Uh, and we're going to set this at a maximum and we're gonna set it to zero. So that way it can't go lower than zero. I know maximum sounds backwards, it should be like the minimum, but that's just how, how math nodes work for whatever reason. And now if we have a negative factor plugged in, uh, nothing weird happens to the color. And if it is above, then it starts to glow. Uh, so now there is just one more thing I'm going to show you, and that is how to add this to, to, your, um, to your asset browser. Uh, so we already saved our folder. Uh, if you don't know how to start using the asset browser, there's going to be a screenshot right here that you can pause and learn how to do that. Uh, if you're already ready, then we can right click over the name of this principled metal, and we can mark it as an asset. And now all we have to do is if we have a folder over here called shading or materials or whatever you want to call it, you can just drag and drop this principled matter, metal over into shading. And now we go there and it's right there. And now all we have to do is control S and save our file. And now we can use this principled metal, metal in any project that you are working on. So I hope you liked this video uh, because the next videos will be talking about how to make some dielectric shaders, which basically dielectric is all materials that are not metal, whether it's skin or wood or concrete or, 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 or plastic. And uh, that also includes clear materials like glass, but I'm actually gonna break that one up into a third video and a third shader. And along with that one, I'm actually going to share something very special that I think many if not potentially everybody, will find extremely useful. When I publish those videos, there will be a link in the description to the full playlist, and you can see all the materials that we create. I think I'm also planning a cloth at some point and a few others. Um, and other than that, uh, if you have any feedback or suggestions, please let me know in the comments uh, so that I can make my next tutorials even better for you.